It's our big ticket item that we're giving away today is corn, Kojira, and Spirit Box. And that's going to be October 3rd. Your opportunity to win those tickets is going to be around 8.10 this morning. We're going to play a little game to give those tickets away, so uh, be ready for that. All right, but first, uh, there is a stripper bill of rights, and this is the first of its kind in the United States. Mm -hmm. And here to report on it is Weirdo. What do you got, Weirdo? Yeah, now we had actually reported on this that this was starting to get some momentum because Uh it's just necessary and needed. And as of Monday, the governor of Washington state signed it into law. Yes, Washington state is the first state, hopefully of many in the Mm -hmm. future, that implemented a stripper bill of rights. But, you know, obviously it's a fancy title. What does a stripper bill of rights actually include? All right, so it includes training for employees in establishments to prevent sexual harassment, identify... Wait, wait, yeah, we'll go one at a time. Okay. uh, Just to assess it. So, yeah, okay, so uh, just to prevent all the other creeps that are working at a strip club Mm -hmm. to not sexually harass uh, the uh, you know dancers and correct yeah okay i think that's long overdue as well Mm because imagine how many bouncers djs bartenders whatever think that if their co-workers just naked all day that they can shoot their shot in inappropriate ways exactly okay yeah just because a woman is standing in front of you naked does not equal consent I know. It's such a confusing thing to say, too. You know what I mean? And in a strip club, especially. Right. Usually, if it's privately, like, in your bedroom, mm-hmm. that's usually consensual. Usually. Still safe to ask. Them. Yeah, very much so. Have them fill out the paperwork. Anyway, <laughs> uh, identify and report human trafficking, which is huge. Is it? It is. Okay. Yeah, because you don't know if a woman is being coerced into working at said job. All right. You know what I mean? Or, uh, I don't know taking doing extra services outside of the club because her pimp is encouraging her to or even abusive husband or whatever it may be so that is actually really good yeah now i'm not uh trying to downplay human trafficking i just hear it used uh, as a weaponized thing Mm -hmm. all the time but of course you know we're seeing human trafficking on a large scale a very public scale with allegations going against diddy and right and whatnot and so i'm like what does that actually entail and 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 maybe I guess the simpleton in me thinks of an actual like kidnapping Mm -hmm. and, you know, transporting. But that's not how it is at all. In fact, actually, it's it's many different ways that could be considered a human trafficking and and emotional manipulation Mm -hmm. is definitely a part of human trafficking. So that's good. Yes. All right. Uh, de-escalating conflict, providing first aid, and it also mandates security workers on site, keypad codes on dressing rooms and panic buttons in places where entertainers may be alone with customers. The VIP room. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little panic button. That'd be nice. Yeah. Somebody's getting a little too creepy. You just hit the button real right, quick. Right. Yeah. And they come in. So, yes. Uh, as- but what if you accidentally twerk on the button? <laughs> you know, and then you got an aggressive wave bouncer. Off. Just wave them off. Aggressive bouncer comes in, just starts punching the <laughs> dude. Like, no, no, I'm sorry. I was just trying to twerk for right. extra tips. It just got a little out of hand. But uh-huh. as somebody who did work in a strip club in her early 20s, a panic button would have been very nice. Oh, yeah. You've been in mm. situations where yes. you needed somebody to like bail you out ASAP. And Correct. Diff- to get their attention i'm yeah. sorry that you've been through that yeah uh, so yeah so to me like this all just really really makes sense so this way the customers are still having a good time but then the, again the workers just feel so much safer because the whole point of this is the fact that it you know strippers are workers too yes you know what i mean like they are just they're out there working hard god knows i know many times i did and others like working 10 hour shifts yeah sex work is work and, mm-hmm. and it's an industry that's been a viable industry and and one that is uh, you know uh benefited the economy and the economies all over the country yes. for a long time right. right i don't even know how many strip clubs we have in this town uh you know right which is actually interesting because as i'm reading this article there's actually only 11 strip clubs in the entire state of washington Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure we have at least seven here alone. On Speedway. Right, exactly. (laughs) So, yeah, so there's actually only 11 clubs across the state of Washington. And the biggest reason is because they actually banned the sale of alcohol originally. So these were dry bars, Right. right, or juice bars. Yeah. And so now part of this legislation will include that they will be setting up liquor licenses for these uh, establishments as well. Oh, well, then be- that's good. Because they recognize like, oh, my God, if we're going to require all this and they got to hire extra staff, these clubs might not be able to make it without the sale of alcohol. So that really helps. Plus, it's going to limit the fees owners can charge um, to the to the dancers, capping it at 150 or 30 percent of the amount dancers made, whichever's less. And then prohibits late fees and other charges related to unpaid balances. Nice. So again, just another level of protection of the dancers not getting screwed over. Oh, nice. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Washington move, making moves uh, mm-hmm. forward and stuff. So it looks like the strip clubs in Washington State are about to get a lot better. Yeah. And it's all through regulation. Go figure. Who would-
would have thought. I know. And there was a bunch of lawmakers there like, oh, man, we got to save these strip clubs because where else am I going to get a lap dance? Exactly. <laughs> All right. We're going to hit the reset. Be back more. Be Figure Presents after this. And we're on. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. Yes, this is, uh, we replace Weirdo with Mari. Good morning, Mari. Hey. We're going to have Herb Stratford in here. Uh, good to see all the streamers on here. Enzo, good to see you joining us on the live stream. Enzo usually watches the replay. Uh, comments along, and I appreciate you, Enzo. So it's good to see you uh, joining us here while we're broadcasting live. Uh, we have a lot to get to. And, uh, of course, Mari, she just came back from Japan. And if you could tell, she has a little bag of goodies in front of her. We don't know what's in it yet. We're going to do a little Whoa. reveal here in a little bit because she always comes bearing gifts, which we're super excited about. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I love Japanese gifts. Yay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now you did. We talked about it with Weirdo before we started the podcast where she was, uh, we mentioned, we jokingly mentioned the used panties and she was like, bum, she didn't get used panties. <laughs> I tried to call her out on it, but apparently she's into used panties. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you didn't give us used panties last time, but you did get me one of those vending machine used panties before. I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Check that one off. My uh -huh. gift today has panties. Okay. Are they used? Oh. No. Not okay. yet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They <It> will <laughs> before the end of the show. Uh, but if you guys don't know, you know, Japan, they're notable for weird kinks. And they did have vending machines. And I don't know if they're still there. Oh, uh, no, they're called gotcha, gotcha balls. So it's like... um. <laughs> Or like gotcha gotcha pawn, I guess. Uh -huh. Gotcha pawn. And they call them like gotcha gotcha balls. And so they're like little vending machines with like these little circle, like little balls that have like lots of weird stuff in it. But like they have random toys. Like now with kids, I'm going to the toy ones, right? I don't go yeah. to like the CD weird ones that have like underwear. <laughs> yes, but see, they have CD weird <laughs> CD weird ones, vending machines, uh -huh. where you could go and one of these gotcha gotcha balls will literally be a pair of panties allegedly worn by some woman. And uh, most you know, likely in, in businessman. Most in likely, central, some, in yeah. central Tokyo, or like something. yeah. Most likely, you don't know what you don't want to know where the origin of the scent <laughs> is from. Most likely, uh, but uh, you know, apparently, a lot of people want to live the fantasy and don't care about like particulars about truth. I would be, I just overthink it too much. And I remember, like, I could barely masturbate to the panties she got me <laughs> because I was just like, ah, yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this could have been a dude scent. <laughs> 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 These pheromones don't turn me on. <laughs> All right, let's get on the air here. Rock on 2.1 KFMA. Good morning, Mari. Good morning. Well, Mari came bearing gifts, and Woo. she's going to reveal what she got us from Japan. You were out there for two weeks, right? Yeah, a little over. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. So, I mean, any eventful things happen besides going to Disney World Japan? Tokyo Disneyland was cool. Um, just the parks were cool. A monkey show. I saw a monkey show. A monkey show. Oh, is it much like a Mexican donkey show? No. Okay. Please. So what is a monkey show? Uh, Mika and me. It was this lady and her monkey. And they just did lots of cool little tricks. Nice. Yeah. All right. Pretty wholesome. Yeah, yeah. That is super wholesome. <laughs> not, as, not as good as Maria. And... <laughs> But that was, that was super offensive, and I immediately apologize for my statements. Uh, and you do not represent that of uh, the station or the company here, uh, Arizona Thank Lotus. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, but we are going to do an unboxing of sorts with Mari yes. uh, on the podcast broadcast stream. You can join us, youtube.com slash beefvegan. Would you rather is coming up next as well. It's a podcast broadcast live. That's it. <laughs> Clear. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> I was like, I, I went to bed somewhat early uh, last night and I wrote out two shows and I'm like, you know, we're going to kill today. But that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you have dreams? Why didn't you sleep well? I had tons of dreams, actually. Very vivid dreams. They're very odd. Uh, they weren't like nightmares. I got terrible news yesterday. We got ratings out uh, yesterday. Oh, nice. uh, it was a trend and it was bad again. Ooh. Really bad. Uh, and this is like the third month in a row that it's really bad. So basically what that means is I fucked up big time. And the way that I did that was by messing with the playlist in December and January. And it kind of scared away a lot of the uh, the dorks that would actually fill out diaries, right? Uh, because that the average listener, as much as we could be like, oh, radio sucks because you hear the same songs over and over again, there's a reason for that, right? A scientific reason, and it is what it is. Now, the good news is um, I fixed it, you know, fixed the mistake couple months ago it just takes a while for us to see the results of that the bad news is the timing of everything yes yes summer's coming up summer's coming up my contract's coming up negotiations coming up this puts me in a very uh bad uh, position at the very least 
it takes away um, any kind of negotiation power. And yeah. so any like opportunities to uh, get a sizable raise or move the show to afternoons, there's little to no argument right now. Um, and you know, the station, they really just live or die by the ratings. And, and I don't know if they'll even consider anything, uh, like talent drive or anything that we accomplished in the past. Mm -hmm. So we've got to see if I could turn this around quick enough. Uh, but it's definitely postponing any kind of negotiations. Now I talked to Mac yesterday and he's given me this terrible news and this guy can't help himself. Like he inadvertently like kicks me when I'm down. Right. And, and um, you know, so I'm like, well, what's the deal? Uh, like, did Razor and Robin get good ratings? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're great. I'm like, shit, dude, then that's a problem with us. Like, that's that's a me problem because we're supposed to outperform the rest of the day. And and I was like, well, how'd Frank do? Oh, Frank did great. I'm like, oh, well, the Jerry actors, you know, they, they picked up the diaries, so that's good to know. And he goes, oh, actually, no, he had a killer 18 to 60 book. And I was like, why don't you piss in my eyes while I'm on fire <laughs> right now? Like, I don't need to hear this right now, dude. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like uh, just uh, pick the time. And it's not the time. Like, I'm already feeling, like, down about everything. Um, so we kept getting these notes in the diary too. that said like, you know, fire that beef guy. We hate him. Yeah. <laughs> he smells funny. You're like, uh, okay. Yeah. Am I still doing the single song takeover? Maybe it depends. I mean, I don't necessarily have a library to choose from, but yes, I mean, I'll still be able to put one song in the nine o'clock hour. That's not going to be an issue. Uh, but you know, uh, we have to crank up the aggression on our social media. Uh, you know, like how we did before. Uh, there's a couple things cause to continue to market the show out there and try to get people back and then, uh, be entertaining. Uh, now the good news is we have been, uh, for the most part, with the exception of some segments today and for, the <laughs> for tomorrow on point and along in a lot of different ways. So the show's solid, the content's good. Um, and it's going to be interesting. We'll talk more about it here in a minute. Rock one, 2.1 KFMA. There you go. That was Nirvana. Uh, welcome back to the show. Now that Mari's here, let's bring gifts and goodies. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's almost like an unboxing and a show and tell because Mari just came back from Japan and you, you brought, you came back bearing gifts, right? I did. Okay. So what's the first gift you got and yeah. who did you get it to for me or Rico? This is a matching gift for you guys. Oh, okay, good. Matching <laughs> gift. So we don't have to like uh, arm wrestle over this. Yes. Oh, who boy. likes pink? Who likes red or who likes blue? I like, Blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. you're, you're such a machismo, dude. Like, okay, fine. I'll what? take the pink I do because like I'm, Blue. It's red. I'm confident. It's red. <laughs> okay. Okay, what the hell is this? My, my boy. <laughs> you are showing my me. My son. It's, it's I'm going to raise him good. A little stress ball. You can't. It's a baby. It's a. It's, it looks like a sleeping baby. Like a little a stress relief baby. A fetus baby that you squeeze. You don't eat this. <laughs> no. it looks so edible. <laughs> like, I want to eat it. It does look edible. So what is the story nom, behind nom, this? Nom, nom. I have no idea. I just saw them everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you, okay so you saw these everywhere. Now, what you're gonna see on the podcast broadcast stream is these little what they look like gummy babies, um, <laughs> little sumo <laughs> babies, wearing a pair of underwear, but then holding another pair of underwear. Right? So it has two pairs of underwear. Yeah. Very odd. Yeah, I don't know why they have two in case they need a backup. Is it underwear? Yeah. A, a a yeah. It could be a bathing suit, but either way, it still looks underwear. Laser to me. Gun. Um, there's something pointing at the bottom of this. Don't tell me these are anatomically correct. <laughs> wow. So you picked this up where? Um, so I saw them everywhere. Like there's a claw machine where you could grab those guys that are in like a baby bottle. And I didn't want to do that because I can't do claw machines. They're very hard. Yes. And so then I saw those at a store. And then to <laughs> my extreme excitement, it was buy one, get one. BOGO. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, how much did it cost for one? I think it was literally $2. So it was a dollar each. All right. That's good. And now I'm squeezing. Wait, what does it say on the back? Do you see that? Does it, it say it's weird because I squeezed $4. the baby's head. And the more I squeeze the baby's head and flatten it, the more it looks like it could biologically be my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Look how big that head is. All right. What my else? boy. Yeah, that's my boy. Okay. All right, what else you got? I tried to find weird gotcha gotcha balls, okay. right? Because like... Um... Now, the gotcha gotcha balls is a phenomenon that's strictly in Japan. They're essentially vending machines, and they kind of got a notor like 
notoriety because they would sell odd things like used panties in them. Um, and so it's just like a mystery ball. A well, mystery they, Pokemon ball. There's like ball. a sign out front that tells, like on the top or on the front that says like what it is. Yeah. But you just don't know which ball you're going to get. Right. right. There's like a selection you can get. Yeah, yeah. It's you can so, definitely weed out the weird ones and the non-weird ones. Their vending machine <laughs> culture out there is always bizarre oh, and fascinating. The best. the best. Yeah. You are never thirsty there. There are so many vending machines with drinks. You can get a drink anywhere in the most remote location <laughs> in the country. There's like a random vending machine. Yeah. It's on the road. That is so odd. That's funny. Right. That's the best. All right. Oh, so, okay. What'd you get okay. out of the Scotch Gotcha? Did you, so, do you know? Yes. Okay. I do. But Woo. there's a weird one for you. And okay. this one, I think. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm just going to explain yours because it's a meditating monster. Okay. Yeah. Explain mine while I open it. While Rico opens his and tries to figure out what he got. So this is a meditating monster. Yeah. Nice. Nice little toy I didn't get here. the one I really wanted, but I still think that one is a nice. This one looks like Godzilla. He is a different guy, though. I can like Gamora, I guess, or. Oh, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they, they they have a fascination with monster culture. What did you get, Rico? It's a keychain of sorts with a very transparent apparatus with the running arms and legs. <laughs> okay. That's the easiest way I can explain. Yeah, you can see <laughs> well, what we got oh, on Japan. the podcast broadcast stream, youtube.com slash uh, This is fascinating. This is definitely going to go right up here. <laughs> so uh, hopefully Powers doesn't steal it because this dude loves toys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, yeah, you get, you see all the series. So that's Gotcha Gotcha and Not Perverted Gotcha Gotcha. So that's no. good. All right, anything else? Um. Okay, you guys have to split this though. Oh, we got candy. Mm. Okay. Oh, you got candy, but the, I mean, normal candy, Kit Kats, they're just normal, nothing crazy. And this is caffeine gum. Woo! Oh, I'll take some caffeine gum right now. Would yeah. you dose up on caffeine gum? I'll put it in my black, coffee. Black. Dude, we needed this uh, all morning long. You should have came in at 6 o'clock. <laughs> it's called Black Black? Yes. Is that? Do you want to do a Japanese commercial with me later? <laughs> yes. <laughs> here, here you go. Here's mm, a stick black, of black, black. Let's see what it tastes like here, real quick. And yeah, then we'll uh, keep the conversation moving on the podcast and come back with some would you rathers and some movie reviews from Herb Stratford. All right. That's hard. <laughs> hard and black, black. Mm -hmm. mm. Just like you like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does it taste like? Like spearmint. Oh. Yeah, but your average gum? It's like a tame spearmint. It's not a strong spearmint. Oh, no, I'll let the flavor kind of absorb and we'll give you an update on <laughs> that. Yeah, you can like, join us youtube.com slash be vegan. There you'll see my lifelike baby that I got. Spearmint and meth. <laughs> from my spearmint and meth. Mm. Black, black. Mm. Oh, I can taste the caffeine. <laughs> Feel the rage. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, we got music on the way. New music from Bear Tooth. Then we got Would You Rathers and Herb Shafford. Stick around. It's Rock 1 2.1. Clear. All right. Which Somebody was good. Gone. Mm. Oh, no way. Yeah. Thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. I love Japanese confectionery. Yeah, so see you, Manning. All right. Yeah. Uh, the Kit all the great candy. Yeah. The yeah, strawberry Kit Kats Kit are Kat. bomb. Buddy tree. Yeah. Kit Kat. Oh, I love it. You are the best mom ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Show mom. Sugar oh, butter Japan. tree Kit Kats. Yeah, oh, those yeah. ones look good. Yeah, they look bomb. You didn't eat them? No, I didn't. My boy yeah, will enjoy these. A bunch of things. Does caffeine have a taste? That's an excellent uh, question. And the answer is probably no, uh, but I'm feeling like it does. I feel awake taste. now. Uh, do you really? Yeah. I might have to take two. I, you know. <laughs> Cleared my sinuses? Double dose? Yeah. I'm, I can see the future? I'm going to OD crazy. on uh, caffeine gum. I know. Yeah. So I'm tweaking out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting stuff. But I can't stop squeezing this baby. Yeah, you can. I was, gonna, I was gonna make a morbid joke on the air. I'm gonna open this up, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, because I'm just like, oh, this reminds me of this could have been, you know, all this <laughs> no. stuff. Yeah. Um, it's good to see Ward and everyone that's watching the stream there. Uh, you know, as far as the show has been going, uh, it's been feeling great. You know, and we've been getting a lot of interaction, and engagement from uh, listeners, new and old. Uh, podcast course slowly growing, our community slowly growing. Uh, you know, and we have a lot of uphill battles. It's not like they ever put us in a position to succeed ever. Right. So, you know, it would it be a surprise if it didn't. Um, it wouldn't be a surprise to to anyone else. I don't know. So I don't know. It's just it's something to stress on. But uh, yeah, so yesterday's day was shitty. But I, I did still sleep okay, and then I had a bunch of odd dreams, but they weren't work-related dreams, thank God. Oh, none that you got fired or anything like that? No, no. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to get fired or be in a position to get fired. But at the same time, I'm not even scared of that because, honestly, 
in this industry, you kind of fail upwards. Yeah. And uh, and me like losing this position would only possibly mean a that, promotion. Yeah, that I get promoted <laughs> somewhere else. I make more money and I'm in a bigger market. Uh, everything that I put together and and all my skill sets that I've developed over these years are, are definitely uh, you know desirable to other companies looking for uh, you know people in, in my position. And I, my resume looks good, so I have confidence on that. My daughter's almost graduating; she's going to be done with high school Ooh. by the time my contract is up. So timing might be right for me to go. That's the sad news, right? Uh, is ending this because I feel like there's a lot to accomplish uh, from Tucson outside of Tucson. Yeah. Meaning that we, I feel like we could continue to grow this podcast and the show itself as a brand uh, nationally without having to do anything but utilizing our own resources in our own backyard and still living in Arizona, right? Um, but unfortunately, if if the company doesn't value what I bring to the table and look at this as me failing, as opposed to me making a mistake and learning from it, potentially, um, then that's on the company. Then I can't trust the company anymore. I've already was going into this contract negotiation, feeling uncertain about how they were going to reward me for my efforts. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I still feel like, you know, we don't get shit. Um, you know, I still have Rico who's two days a week. Weirdo who's three days a week. You who are one to two days a week. I don't have one full-time co-host. Right. Um, you know, they're like every other show, they they they're three man team. ESPN, which has literally like 20 listeners, uh, you know, on a regular. Did and that's no knock to them, but it's Justin an AM is, station. Uh, was on bar rescue. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, we know. Oh, yeah. Know so, he's, he's too blocked. cool for us now. Yeah, you kidding me? He blocked me on social media. <laughs> yeah, he's, immediately. Yeah, he's such a star now. So I'm like, <laughs> Like who? Be yeah. What? It's a, a weird name. Deal. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, so there was some resentment going into it, but now having this conversation, I'm not looking forward to it. And whatever the case, and luckily I have this baby to squeeze the fuck out of. I feel yeah, so I was much. Gonna say this is a pretty good gift for you at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Between you the gum, it. clearing my sinuses, this baby de-stressing <laughs> me. I'll show you. Things this. are good. I'll show you this real quick. So it's not anatomically correct, but it definitely looks like it with the underwear. <laughs> you see this little baby? Like what? He gave me a little baby peen. Um, is there something we could do? Lisa, yeah. I mean, I guess anyone who's a supporter of the show, streamer, you know, um, social media, I guess just post one of the images or, you know, um, anything like, hey, check out Be Vegan Presents while we're on the air or something like that. Or, or if anything, hey, this part made me laugh and then tag us and then we could share it. So social media, I guess, is the only way we could do that and word of mouth. But the rest of it, I think, don't worry. Uh, everything else has been growing. We just did our rock one 2.1 cash pal thing and our numbers of people texting in are very similar to that of frank uh mm -hmm. and a lot of times would be uh mix fm so it's not that people aren't listening it's just that the people that had the diaries you know um just so bizarre it's like that's uh oh, i hate that metric so the diary strange. thing i know i know but at the same time you know like it's an excuse for failure but then they also blame it on you as well so when it comes to this so i don't know i mean i don't know you know, like, look, we're not everyone's cup of tea and that's just how it's going to be. Uh, and in our competition, which is in the same company as uh, 20 years of, uh, you know, like listenership. Yeah. Listenership. And, yeah. you know, some people are just creatures of habit. So that's how it is. Hello. All right. Welcome, Herb Trafford. Hello. Mr. I know. It's been so long. That's for you from Japan. So yeah, cool, <laughs> I know. Anthony said, I think the timing is ridiculous to get to the top of the ratings and you have your winter break for two weeks and it kind of kills momentum. And it mm -hmm. wasn't even the winter break. It was me fucking around in December. But yeah, that's what did it Um, it was starting towards that tail end in that winter book. And it, I haven't been able to recover from that yet. Uh, and if I would have negotiated this time last year or hell, even in November last year, it'd be a whole different ball game. But now, so when those ratings were on top back in December, that was a lot to do with obviously a lot to do with the, the diaries too, right? People yeah, were filling those out and yeah, saying yeah. the name. Yeah, no, no. Huh. Uh, we've been getting murdered on the ratings here right, uh, recently, Herb. I don't know if you heard that. I did not. So yeah. what? The book came out and it's not good. Well, it's not a book; it's a trend. So that's oh, the good okay. news. But the right. bad news is hmm. the next month will be the book, and it, it averages three months. So even if we had like a stellar month, which it's already over. And we did great this last month as far as doing promotions, content, and everything. We've been killing it. Um, but then, and that's the way it feels. Uh, even if we have like a good one month, we still have two terrible months. It's almost guaranteed to be shit. 
Yeah. And the problem is just the timing of it with uh, contract negotiation and stuff like that. So I uh, look, I don't know if this was kind of forewarning and my like instincts or maybe I'm, uh, you know, creating my own destiny kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I start off every year kind of like, you know, with like a mantra or something like that. Uh, my on the top of my show sheet that I started on January 1st, it was it was called I, I titled this year sprint to the finish line. All right. Whatever that may mean. And, you know, like positively could mean uh, getting that new contract. And we're just going to like now's the time to turn it up to 11 and it goes hard as we can to, to make this a reality. Or now's the time of the end of my run here. Oh, well, that's a possibility. It's a strong possibility. Um, So we're going to sprint to that finish line. When I did Phoenix and started in Phoenix, it was about seven and a half years of radio that I was doing. And then. I'm in Tucson, about seven and a half years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's kind of like lined up. I've been doing radio for 15 years. So, but it's it's kind of like an equal thing. It's like, is it now time to to move on? And it really depends. If they say, hey, uh, we'll renew your contract for like two thousand dollars less a year because you <laughs> fucking suck, <laughs> then I'll be like, well, fuck you. I will show you yeah. that I don't suck. And uh, you know, so that's well, what I'm I'm sorry to hear that. No, nah, don't worry. It's it's a part of the game, dude. You know, know, and then unfortunately, it's such a like um, you don't get instant gratification. I mean, you do from callers and stuff like that. But as far as how well you're doing, it takes months to figure that out. And then how <laughs> bad you're doing takes months. And then you then you correct course and it takes months to see the change. Yeah. So the good news, like I was saying, is I made the change a couple months ago because I saw the writing on the wall before they did. And this is frustrating as well. Because now, like, I'm getting having a serious talk, and yesterday's like, yeah, I was talking with uh, Murphy about this, and yeah, this is this is the thing we need to have a meeting. I'm like, bitch, I've been asking for a meeting for two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I saw this when I when I noticed that my numbers were lower than Robin Nash's, then I knew there was a problem here. I knew I fucked up, and so without you having to tell me I fucked up, I already started fixing what I was doing. But at the same time. Uh, did I fuck up to a point where it's going to take a while to get them back? And we haven't been able to do anything to kind of advertise to bring them back until recently with the cash pal promotion. Now with that, we reached how many people during that promotion, Rico? Oh, I don't remember the exact metrics, but a substantial amount. Yeah. Which is bare minimum, bare bones advertising. Yeah. You know, yeah. Online. So we finally did, targeted marketing. They finally paid, did paid advertising and they did it um, for uh, just this, giveaway cash giveaway. campaign so they didn't do it for us but i made a video a clip of the show that was content driven that was good that would hopefully direct people to this so we'll see what happens 15 seconds um it's on funeral though so <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot to get to we're gonna start off with some would you rathers are you uh, feeling good on that of course okay, if mari if mari, yeah. if mari brings him i'm here Yes, these are going to be Japanese style. Oh, oh awesome. Great. Rock 1 2.1 KF, man. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Uh, we're back here live on the podcast broadcast. Uh, Jeff said, uh, Beef, uh, if you're let go, us streamers will riot. All hundred of you. All right. Well, <laughs> it's not, a, not exactly a J6 situation there, Jeff, but I appreciate it. Uh, we got, bring that energy. <laughs> we got Herb Stratford live in the studio. Uh, welcome back, Herb. Hey, thank you. We're going to get into our movie reviews and everything that we do with her. But first, uh, since we got Mari all the way back from Japan, we got to do another edition of Would You Rather? So she's always coming up with these impossible scenarios. You guys know the deal. You got to pick one or the other and why. Uh, with that said, Mari, what's our first Would You Rather? Okay, the first one actually comes from my son. Oh, no. Yeah, he gave it to me. <laughs> Which Japan. one? Coda? Coda. Okay. <laughs> oh, and he's like almost five now? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. A five-year-old Would You Rather? Yes. All right. Would You Rather? <laughs> Have 100 arms or 100 legs? Ah, that's actually pretty good, Coda. <laughs> Damn, Coda. This kid's a Why genius. you gotta do that? Yeah, Why you gotta do that? <laughs> You're raising the next Bill Gates, man. Um, all right, Herb, which one? 100 arms, 100 legs? You know, I'm I'm gonna go with legs because sometimes I feel like when I'm trying to sleep, my arms get in the way. So I can't imagine having a hundred of those. But like a hundred <laughs> legs, I think you could figure that out. Yeah, I would say 100 legs as well. Not only will I get places uh, faster, uh, but, you know, I only have one penis, so that's 99 extra arms. Don't necessarily need them, you know? And yeah, I know some of you out there will be like, that's 99 stranger bros, strangers, bro, but no, it's not. It's overdoing it. Right? I would be blind before I was 14. Uh, what would you say, Rico? Probably the arms. 
Okay. I and would choose those because you want to have biceps, a hundred different <laughs> like guns. Like half of them are like flabby and weak, and the other half is like super jacked. <laughs> no, I think it'd be kind of cool to be like a street fighter kind of guy. Like you challenge, beat the hundred arm guy. <laughs> And you get a thousand dollars and just pummel them. This guy's with like, thousand arms. Hey, your last boyfriend brought you to the gun yeah. show. <laughs> I'm bringing the military to you, baby. It's a Gatlin gun. You're a maniac. Yeah. Too many weights. I would hate to see 100 Art Rico walking into the gym ahead of me, knowing that no free weights will be available for an entire hour. It's every weight taken. I need, yeah. I need an AI version of that. So, Rico, I think you I'm need to on, get on that. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, so you got to see it. All right. Uh, Mari, give us another would you rather. All right. This one comes from Kenzo. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Family ordeal. Yeah. It is. We spent a lot of time together recently. Um, would you rather all chips taste like soap? Or only be able to use Dorito scented soap. <laughs> oh. Okay, so eliminate chips from your diet yeah. altogether. Or <laughs> can you? Chips are amazing. Well, if they taste like soap, I don't think they're that amazing. <laughs> Is it soap and vinegar? Still not good. You know? The Irish spring. What kind of soap? <laughs> I used to, you know, when I was uh, 11 years old, I developed a taste for soap uh, because <laughs> I did. And this is a, a real story. Tell my, us more. My mom, uh, if I cursed, she would punish me by me eating a bar of soap. Yeah. So then I started eating the bar of soap in front of her spitefully <laughs> to show her that I liked it. And then I caught myself several times doing it when she wasn't around. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yikes. So I guess the moral of the story is uh, don't do that to punish your kids. Uh, you know, yeah. they might develop a nasty habit. Uh, it's pretty clean, though, you know, on the inside. <laughs> Good breath. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, ter uh, that's the opposite of good, but okay. Um, so which would you rather hear, Herb? Um, I'm gonna go with Dorito scented soap just because I, I just can't imagine eating soap. All right, here's just uh, your situation, your dilemma. You're at the grocery store, you're about to pick up some soap. All right, you going with Cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese? <laughs> Oh, nacho cheese, man. Ah, that's the wrong answer. I was looking for, I was looking for Cool Ranch for sure. Uh, yeah, I would uh, I would do the soap as well and go for Cool Ranch. What would you say, Rico? Mm. Like you said earlier, I think it'd be very easy to eliminate that from your diet. Yeah. Chips entirely. But I would be curious what kind of females I would attract with that kind of scent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hungry ones. Zero. Hungry. Yeah. And combine Zero. that with the arms, forget about it. Oh, forget, yeah. about, forget it. about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, first off, you would need 100 arms. You need 90 arms to <laughs> bat away all the women. <laughs> and, <laughs> and have 90 arms. So give us one more, would you rather? Okay, last one. And this is from experience because okay. the way back was pretty interesting. But would you rather fight a pack of angry flight attendants or bus drivers? Angry flight attendants or bus drivers. Okay, I'll start off with this one. Um, <laughs> I would go with the flight attendants. And, you know, I know that they don't have the same rules and standards that they did initially in the Pan Am days uh, because, you know, they would always kind of worry about weight, a certain amount of weight. But uh, let's assume that, you know, flight attendants, they have to go down narrow aisles. Right. And uh, you, of course, you, you know, you're dealing with physics. So, uh, you know, the, the more weight they can save, the more fuel, the, the less fuel they burn. Um, so they're going to be a little skinnier, uh, a little easier to take out. Uh, bus drivers, on the other hand, uh, you know, they never like consider those physics for burning gas. And they're sitting on their ass all day long. So assumingly so they're going to be less active and a lot fatter, meaning they're going to pack a little more power in their punch. I mean, I thought this out thoroughly. Yes, so really uh, did. I think I would be able to take out the flight attendants way easier than any bus drivers. For See, sure. I'm the opposite. I mean, okay, why? Because if you would have asked me this a couple months ago, I would have totally chosen the flight attendants. Okay. But with Boeing and the whole flight industry lately, it's like those attendants are dealing with knocking on death's door every single flight. <laughs> so they're like hardened now. Okay. They're like close to death. They don't care about dying. Okay. So now they're terrifying. All right, yeah. So, so would the, the they would drivers. fight to the death because it's they like, just, we don't die like, today, yeah, we're we die. might die tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, <laughs> they, they keep forgetting to put bolts in these planes. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. I see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, what about you, Herb? Um, You know, I, I feel like, uh, I'm with you, Beef. I feel like the flight attendant to be easier. Um, I'm just like, it's funny. Yeah, just like yesterday, I was, I was sitting in a stoplight and this guy is just walking against traffic and like the bus is honking at this guy and this guy doesn't care. No. Nope. So I think the bus drivers, they're just over it. I yes. think that they're just like, they're, they're seeing the worst of humanity. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they're just like, they would just take zero 
crap from you. Yeah, so. in fact, actually, I mean, that kind of backs up uh, like Rico's argument, but flips it because of bus drivers, they sacrifice or uh, risk their lives each and every day just for the people getting on the bus, you know, and driving <laughs> yeah. to Midtown for sure. So uh, yeah. they're both pretty, I mean, it's yeah, service like industry. Saying, take all the factors you just said, but add 10,000 feet in the air. Uh, true. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, that's uh, that's one we could debate for days. But that's, <laughs> Let's do it. A whole new podcast. <laughs> Would you rather? Uh, we're going to hit the reset. Be back with Herb Stratford's movies reviews right after these words. Rock 12.1 KFMA. You can join us on the podcast broadcast as we're streaming live. YouTube.com slash Be Vegan. Clear. <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, speaking of which, Herb, let's uh, do. I want to pre record um, your topic. So let me see. Are you, are you cheating? Is that what you're doing? I'm you, cheating. Oh, well, and, and, and you're wondering why things are going south because you're cheating. That's what it is. Oh. I know. Uh, too soon. Okay. Too soon. <laughs> you know? All right. Um, All right. Yeah. I I went well, first off the availability for weirdo. Weirdo's been having uh, to deal with a lot of parental things. Mm. Um. So unfortunately, it would be either me doing a solo show or me having like a supersized show with all my friends. And I feel like the Super Size Show with all my friends is a better listening experience on a Friday mm -hmm. uh, than me just being depressed and by myself. <laughs> <laughs> after, I would agree. After bad news and still, then from car remotes and all the shit. I still think one of these days we need to like pre-record you in this seat and just have you talk to yourself. <laughs> I can like do that. Like I, can pull, I can edit that together. Yeah, yeah. And talk about fantastic show with all the ratings. That'd be funny. <laughs> I just want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, see, let me really get. It. Or you know what you could do? Even better than that, you could pretend to be the three of us. So like, you could have a Dresses blonde wig us. on for Mari, and I could give you a jacket, <laughs> and you could actually interview yourself. You know? Yeah. Oh, oh that might be good. I don't know. I mean, uh, we'll we'll get to a good idea after we get through a thousand bad ideas. So <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah there you go. Well, true. almost there. Uh, let's see. Was a good slot that I could. Uh, do this in seven o'clock hour. <laughs> See, this is another good thing as far as a movie review. It would be in a time of the day that more people are listening, and that's going to be in the seven o'clock hour. So, okay. uh, let's, let's start with your top uh, review here. Okay, okay, that's Asphalt City. Yeah, Ooh. Asphalt City. Yeah, I love the name. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not, It's not asphalt. It's asphalt like the street. I don't like the name. <laughs> 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 see what you got here. Right, oh, I know. Oh. There we go. Three doors down on Rock One Two Point One KF Man. Welcome back, to Beefy Game Presents. Joining us in studio, very special guest. You know him, you love him. He's film critic extraordinaire, Mr. Herb Stratford. Good morning, Herb. Good morning. All right, uh, you want to tell us about a movie that you're super excited about that's coming out this weekend? Yeah, this is this. You know, one of the ways that I judge movies uh, as being sort of good for me or what I enjoy is if it sticks with me, right? It's okay. not like you forget about it and you're like, yeah, I think I saw that, right? If something sort of haunts you and sticks with you. This movie, Asphalt City, which opens today, is 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 that one of those movies? Okay, and it's Were you yours. traumatized. Like, do you want I, you to know, talk I, about it like I, that? I mean, I was a little bit. I have to tell you, it sort of haunted me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being like you know, sort of bombastic here. I mean, this movie. So uh, let bombastic. me explain it to you, and you'll understand why maybe. So this is a story of a young paramedic played by Ty Sheridan, who you've seen in a lot of movies, young kid, um, and he ends up being paired with a seasoned paramedic played by Sean Penn. Okay, okay, Sean Penn's in it. You and, know it's going to be heavy. And this is this is New York City paramedics. You know, I mean, just think about it. Right, uh, okay. right there, oh, it's yeah. loaded. Plus, you've got his young optimism. You've got Penn's, you know, grizzled pessimism. You've got this horrible, horrible patient, right? Because I mean, that's just what it is, right? Yep. I mean, people in New York that are needing a paramedic, chances are it's the worst time of your life and you may be the worst part of you. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. awful. So it's a really powerful film about these two guys and sort of, and then the other paramedics, some of them are cool. Some of them are not. Mike Tyson plays the head of like the paramedics division. Hmm. Mike Tyson, who knew Mike could act? That's amazing. Was yeah. he good in it? He was. Really? Wow. Yeah. So this movie is just, it's its really interesting. It's really powerful. I'm really surprised it's coming out in March because to me, there's some award winning performances in it. It's so, that good. yeah. So ideally, when would this movie be released then if it wanted to be in a run for Oscars and Golden I, Globes? I think it should have been a fall film. I honestly do. I'm not sure why they're releasing it. I'm glad it's getting a theatrical because at least that happens. It's not just going straight to streaming like Roadhouse or anything else. Right. Um, uh, but this movie is really powerful, and I mean, but it's not a feel-good movie. Like, if you don't go there and feel like 
I mean, like afterwards, I kind of sat around for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just stared at the wall, yeah. cosplaying. Like, was, it sounds yeah. like an anxiety-ridden uh, like journey that you're going to be on from begin to end. You're going to be gripping your seat, but uh, in a way that you're just like terrified of what might happen next. Well, but also it makes you appreciate. Like you're like, oh man. I know a couple of paramedics. I gotta, I gotta be nicer to those guys. <laughs> because, oh you know, yeah. And not that like Tucson paramedics, no shade to any of my paramedic friends, but it's not New York City paramedics. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, like every call in New York is probably a nightmare. <laughs> where like they get a lot of like heat stroke calls here. It's not like you know, not like some of the stuff they're dealing with. Oh, so you're definitely pissing off paramedics. Oh right yeah. Now. So, yeah. Excuse yeah. me. All right. Excuse me. I'm like, Stratford. Yeah. Some of the stuff they have to go to therapy for. Are you yeah. kidding me? I'm just saying, in New York with eight million people. There's probably a lot. There's more frequency of really like scarring PTSD okay. stuff. Statistically speaking, uh, the worst of the worst could happen more likely with that amount of people as opposed to yeah. there are eight times more likely to see decapitations. Yeah. Eight times more likely to see, you know, everything else. You're, you're specifically saying volume. Yes. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Frico, for saying You're welcome. Uh, yeah, but at yeah. the same time, there's jurisdiction. And the pizza is kind of better. I love, I love what paramedics do for us. I think they're underappreciated, underpaid. So this is just a good reminder. You see what their life is like. Honestly, it's very verite. You're like in the ambulance with these guys as they're dealing with crazy stuff. How um, how much? Uh, how, like, but what's the percentage of the film that Mike Tyson's actually in? Like, ten percent of the film, twenty percent of the film. How big of a role is this for Mike Tyson? Um, he's probably got three or four scenes. Um, and so you know, ten percent maybe. But I mean, it's funny because I looked at him and I was like, is that Mike? Tyson. And I had to go to IMDb and I'm like, it's Mike Tyson. Did yeah. they give him like hair? He had a, he had a beard. And, okay. And, 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 you know, you didn't, yeah, you couldn't see the face tattoo. Okay. So yeah. that's why you're like, I recognize. Oh, that's Tyson. Wow. So, Did they yeah. make, uh, was there a patient with a missing ear as an inside joke kind of thing? Or <laughs> no, no. Okay. no. Oh, that would have been good. But yeah. I am glad to see like him doing life. something, yeah. you know, and not just making fun of himself, right? Like yeah, it's, it's not the hangover. Yeah. Exactly. Was there a guy that looked like Jake Paul in the ambulance? Okay. okay. Yeah, it was the pre-Jake Paul's fight, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Uh, okay, was he like an angry commissioner? Did he slam his hand yes. on a desk at any yes. moment? Perfect. Okay, so cliche. Yeah. Badge. There gone. it is. Yes. There's the cliche. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. I mean, it was nice to see him. And yeah, so anyway. And you know, Sean Penn, I feel like Sean Penn can be hit or miss. Yes. Like depending on the material. You're absolutely right. Like the documentary about him was painful <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because it was all about his work in Haiti, which is very important, but it was just a little self-aggrandizing. So, so you know. self-involved yeah. John Penn is, yes. And and this one, you're just like, oh yeah, this is this is your sweet spot. You know, you're angst-filled, you you have that gravitas, you look at him, you're like, man, that dude has been through it. It works. Yeah, it's all self-inflicted too. Yeah, but <laughs> all right, so the name of that movie again is? It's called Asphalt City. All right, that's coming to theaters this weekend. That's Herb Shafford's top pick. We're going to hit the reset, be back with more Beefy Can Presents after these words. It's Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. What year is it set in? Now. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah, it's current, this... modern day. Uh, you know, I told you about the story of, uh, you know, when uh, – Sean Penn wrote for Rolling Stone talking about trying to track down El Chapo. Yeah. 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 And then like a part of the article was literally talking about like uh, descriptively like taking out his dick and peeing and like, like get basking in the glow of his own manhood. Like, <laughs> and it's such a weird way. You're just like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> which one's El Chapo again? But so that's Sean Penn, man. He's weird. interesting cat. Yeah. Well, I read this He's book. even weirder than Nicolas Cage to me, which is kind of funny. Like looking enigmatic sort of actor types, and you're just like, yeah, Sean Penn seems a little out there. Yeah, I'm gonna invite Todd in to the stream real quick because Todd, what are you saying? Who took Beast Word today? What did I say? What did I walk back uh -oh. today? <laughs> okay, what did I walk back today? Uh, but Herb actually had an awesome uh interview as well, which will feature here in uh a second. Oh, let me show you this. I'm not even on the stream because I don't get invited anymore. I so. did invite you actually. Win. <laughs> Win. Yeah, refresh your email. All right. Check the there's the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the receipts. Yeah, dude. You're still in. Did you do it when I was across the hall? Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's uh -huh. why. Oh All shit. Right. I okay. stand corrected. Right. That's right. Uh, I said corrected. Apologies. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right now. Okay. All right. So um uh we talked about of uh, this uh the conjoined twins that got married. So this, oh, yeah. apparently this is all the news right now, but this happened in 2021. Uh, he he oh. is ecstatic because he's just like two for the price of one. Uh, and he's also happy because he married the hot sister. She's one right there on the left. That's Abby. 
Um, of course, this is these twins were famous uh, and on all the talk shows back in the day, had their own reality show as well. Uh, Josh is a retired uh, U.S. veteran and nurse, and Abby is, again, the one on the left, and her sister uh, is connected right there by the head. Now, if you recall, uh, Abby controls the right side of the body, the arm and the leg, and her sister controls the left side of the arm and the leg. So they had to learn how to walk and kind of um, go together. Uh, but Josh is in a relationship with just Abby, and then her sister just watches. <laughs> just like, Jeez. yeah, yeah. Um, but, of course... This is posted online. Uh, everyone's super happy, and that's the the appropriate way to respond. Uh, the inappropriate way to respond is in the comments, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because then they were just like, "Oh, look at that! You got two for." I got Let's some questions. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, either way, if you think like adult, like you know, intimate when they get intimate, obviously you gotta think, okay, they're definitely getting intimate because honeymoon, they got married, you put a ring on it. Um, she's at the very least going to witness it like right there. Right. You know, um, there's going to be some stuff. You slept with my sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And so the questions are, do you, you make out with both of them? You only make out with one. Is she free to date others? I mean, there's more questions than answers for sure. Uh, but the good news is she did find love. She did get married yeah. and, um, they share the same the organs and everything down there. So it's, it's two different uh heads personalities and the way it's run one vagina and so you know there's no separation there no yeah so if she decided the sister did decide the date and wanted her own relationship that's where it gets a little complicated yes um a privacy curtain i say a little complicated as the understatement of the century <laughs> everything about well, the super and you know here's the thing that the, the the second sister had to like had to like the husband, right? Yeah, you, you well, know I mean? you know, just like any relationship, you, you give the approval of family as yeah. needed, you know. Uh, it's difficult to have a, a good relationship there. Here's a reenactment of what it's like when Josh <laughs> tries to kiss his wife and the other has the twins like, oh, I'm not in it. Um, so odd, though. Uh, but for whatever reason, again, this happened in 2021. It's gone viral today. Really? It was mm -hmm. that long? Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. that they were married. When you're single, it just hurts. You're like, huh? They found love. <laughs> they found love. Good for them. <laughs> Good for them. Don't worry. You'll find your two-headed we'll conjoined twin yeah. someday. As soon as you get those hundred arms, man, you are right? going to yes. be unbeatable. <laughs> hey, did you come up with that? Um, we're back on the air, by the way. Rock one, two point one. Did you make one of those AI images? No, no, not yet. Oh, I got to see he's, it. He's, he's brushing it off. Well, while Herb is <laughs> giving us a rundown of what we can look forward to this weekend, uh, why don't you crank one out? Because I'd like to show it on the stream before you wrap things up. I will not crank one out for you, sir. <laughs> well, no, what? he didn't say rub one out. He said crank one out. Yeah, hey, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's totally different. <laughs> Fine. I'll go crank it in the corner. Look, right? I understand. <laughs> this whole time since Mari's given us these little squishy babies, Rico and I have just been squishing yes. the hell out of our babies. <laughs> like, now I get it. Yeah. Now I get it. It's been amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, Herb, what is happening this weekend as far as, uh, you know, entertainment that we could see while sitting down? So, uh, so, <laughs> so we can talk about, uh, well, it depends if you want to talk about uh, Late Night with the Devil, because that's sort of the big buzz oh, thing yeah. right now. Yes, so. uh, please do. And actually, you just interviewed uh, one of the actors from Late Night and the Devil, and I just watched a preview of that and the trailer. And it looks fascinating. Yeah, Don't so worry. this is uh, David Dashmalian, who you re you may remember him. He's one of these guys that's been in everything. He was in Dune Part 1. He was Polka Dot Man in Suicide Squad. He was in mm. Oppenheimer. He was in uh, The Dark Knight. Prisoners. Uh, he, you know, yeah, he's, he's been so many things, right? Yeah. So uh, it's really great to see this, this film because he is center stage. And the story is he plays a talk show host who's always coming in second to Johnny Carson. So it's a period piece set in the 70s. And uh, it's a horror sort of verite found film thing so it's appearing to me like this is the first time we've seen the actual footage of what happened and you know and basically it's like his last attempt at trying to beat carson uh he's coming back after a bunch of trouble he has this weird sort of guest on that he, she has a, a young girl with her who's uh who's in sort of possessed by a demon and uh so it's just it's really good and i mean this is 96 percent on rotten tomatoes Ooh. for a genre horror movie starring a guy who's traditionally you know, a B actor, even though he's a great actor, a great guy, but a great supporting actor. Yeah. But he's never been center stage. So, yeah. uh, so I got a chance to talk to him on Saturday and, uh, the, the full clip is up on the uh, arts and culture guy on, on YouTube. And 
he's just uh, he's just such a great guy and such an interesting character and he's done such interesting films and worked with such great you know directors and other cast members so definitely worth checking out i mean this movie and on sunday on sunday this movie made six hundred sixty six thousand dollars Oh, that's creepy. All right. But so, yeah, so there is enough buzz behind it where it's yeah. actually making money. So this film it, is making money. It is. It's and his most a, successful. And obviously, he's never been the star, but this is a big deal for him. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. huge. You know, and I loved him in Suicide Squad. And, uh, of course, you know, in all his other smaller roles, he always plays like a very important kind of character. Yeah. No matter how small. So it's good to see it get a shine. And, you know, what's interesting, too, the whole, like, plot line is very relatable. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You, you've, had, you've had possessed good guests in here, I know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, right? so, yeah, so that's really good. Um, the other thing that's interesting streaming um, that we should talk about is the Steve Martin documentary. Huh. Oh, nice. Really, really good. So this is Morgan Neville, who the director of 20 Feet for Stardom and Won't You Be My Neighbor, Academy Award winning director, uh, great documentary filmmaker. This is Steve Martin, and it's it's two parts. It's an hour and a half each part. But what's interesting is uh, the first part is called Then, and the second part is called Now. So the first part is all about his stand-up. And I don't know when you guys discovered Steve Martin, but I was 12 years old when his album came out. And I was, and at that point, he'd been doing it for a while. But um, I just, he was like, the, he was the comedian for me. More than Robin Williams, more than Richard Pryor, more than any of the other guys that were out there. He was the biggest comedian in the world. He was. And, and he, he was, was the first comedian to be selling out stadiums. Exactly. A huge, well, huge yes. guy. And, and he walked away from it all. all. Exactly. He walked away at the peak because he didn't want to fade. And I mean, who has... Who has the ability to do that? I know. <laughs> you know, no, it's amazing. He's had a legendary life, and you know, it's gonna be fascinating with that entire documentary because he's also like a musician and he oh, like yeah. devoted his time for that. He was a great actor, award-winning actor. As and now well. he's back to stand-up. He's on the road with Martin Short. And yeah. I mean, it's just and he's married second wife, he's got a kid now. It's just a really beautiful story. It's so great, and it reminds you of all the amazing stuff. They talk to Tina Fey, they talked to Jerry Seinfeld, they talked to, um, uh, you know, everybody that he's worked with. Uh, what's his name from uh, Saturday Night Live? Who's it? I'm blank, blanking on the Lauren producer. Michaels. Lauren Michaels. Yep. Uh, it's just so great to have all these people talk about him and to, for him to get his due. Yeah. And for him to be so happy and comfortable in his life. This is a great, it's on Apple TV, so check it out if you've got that. Totally worth your time. Excellent. Uh, Herb Stratford, everybody. Uh, we're going to watch a part of his interview on the podcast broadcast with the star of the, the movie. It was called The Devil What? Late Night uh, with the Devil. Late, Late Night, Night with, with the Devil. devil. Uh, and uh, we'll be back with your beef tip after these words. You can join us YouTube.com slash Beef Vegan or keep it right here. It's Rock 1 2.1. Clear. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, it sounds really good. It's, and It's so good. And I watched it. I watched it. I didn't watch them all straight through. I watched one one day and one the next day. And it's just, it's, I mean, God, you just like that guy. Is it only at the loft or is it actually playing in theaters? No, it, it's streaming Apple TV. Oh no, uh, Late Night with the Devil. I'm sorry. Late Night with the Devil. Yeah, Late Night with the Devil is at the loft, um, but I think it's at other places too. I want to see it. Alright, let's check out uh, some of this uh, conversation that Herb had with this guy. I know this guy. That's the guy. Yeah. That's yeah. what everyone's saying right now. Oh, it's this, this guy. guy. Oh, yeah, 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 this guy. Alright, so yeah. Hey, David, yeah. nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. So let me let me start by just saying you know, you seem to slip into the role of Jack Del Roy so easily. Is that something that you sort of always thought, like, I'd love to be a game show host? I mean, no, it was far from easy. It was really terrifying, to be quite honest with you. If if there's ever been a role that I didn't think I could do, it was Jack Del Roy. I think that I feel comfortable living in the shadows with my characters. I feel comfortable playing misunderstood um, misanthropes and villains and uh, sidekicks. And I love the 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 really robust uh, journey that I've gotten to take as a character actor. But but to be quite frank, the thought of like being a charming, witty, uh, comedic talk show host just didn't seem within my capabilities. And so when the Karens brothers so adamantly told me that they believed I was the person to play this role. I I had to put a lot of trust and faith in them and the other producers on the movie and say, okay, I don't think I can do this, but I'm going to do everything I can to try. And I'm really glad I did because I'm so proud of this movie, man. And I'm so, I love cinema. I love movies. I love that era. I love genre. I love movies that are, can be entertaining and fun while at the same time, you know, really kind of picking apart some of the things that make being a person difficult. And I think this movie gets to do that. And I never, 
in my wildest dreams thought that we would be getting this crazy huge response from people and it makes me so uh grateful nice well and i gotta tell you you know i i loved the richness of the world and the way that the guys um sort of built out your backstory about, you know, sort of your competition with Carson and, you know, all the sort of clips of the, all the different things that we sort of all grew up watching. And it almost made me be like, I want to see more of, of, of your show. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see the rest of that. I, I don't want this to be over in a single movie. I want to have a limited series or something where this is the capstone, you know? I would love that. I would love that. And I would love to like, think about, we could do like, um, there's spinoffs that could come from this, even short films. I don't know, like what happens next. I want. I, I know everybody is 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 asking me like, what happens the five minutes after this film ends? Um, I guess yeah. maybe we're gonna have to we're gonna have to show everybody. Well, and it, and it seems like this world, this sort of mix up of genres and this you know this 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 horror verite sort of you know this is sort of an interesting world where we're getting some more interesting things that are not just what you would expect as a straight genre pick. And, and I, and I love that. Me too. It feels almost, I don't want to, I'm not trying to sound like I'm, 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 I'm tooting our own horn here by any means. I just, I did feel like there's a stylistic uh, something that I, I was like, this is how I would be approaching a performance in a Cassavetes film, if that makes any sense to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, this is how I would want to go forward if I was doing a 1970s Scorsese film, maybe. Um, and I just, I guess you should reach for the moon when you're trying to make a movie. You got to go for that, 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 you know, Chayefsky kind of um, bravi ta, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, and and you know, to to your earlier point about this sort of being a stretch for you, um, you know, I, I feel like um, impending doom. I feel like there's sort of the hallmark of a lot of your performances, which I'm a big fan of. And there's this sort of thing that you've got going on here through the script and through your performance. That's this this core of of, of aspiration, you know, loss, um, redemption so much of that's playing in your in your face but it also seems like it's just such a meaty role that you got to dig into and it seems like that almost would have been exhausting because you're carrying so much on your shoulders was that was that a big difference it was pretty it was pretty exhausting for sure and i think that um for me one of the key holes into locking into an understanding and and and, and finding my way with jack was something that i david can relate to, which is that there is a version of me that I present to you, to the rest of the people I'm talking to on the press junket or my uh, people I interact with in the world. And that's not that that's not really the, the me that is authentic. I mean, I feel like I'm being myself today and in this conversation and when I'm, you know, talking to folks uh, out in the world, but then there's the, the guy who's, alone or you know having a, a totally different kind of interaction with the people in my private life um and that push and pull between how vulnerable you can be and how scared you can be and if you don't feel safe in any of those spaces what kind of to toll that can take on your psyche I felt like that yeah there you go. Uh, that's a part of the interview. There's a couple more minutes left on an interview that you could check out, Arts and Culture Guy, and follow Herb and subscribe while you're there. You know, and Mecca saw it, and a bunch of people saw it that are streamers and checked it out. Give it a like and subscribe. It right. was a great interview, but I was asking Herb. I'm like, you didn't ask my polka dot man, or or what? What the hell's going on? <laughs> was John this, Cena uh, like? Is Neil the Polish? Yeah, yeah. Does he get to still is talk? Cool? John Cena. <laughs> was he naked on set? Yeah, and he <laughs> probably was. You well, know? We know what you would ask, Rico. <laughs> How oh. many? Arms as you have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is routine. Which is, yeah, what's the workout? Is it two days? And uh, yeah, it's GH creatine, oh, it's diet, or is it sport? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, well, that's all the time we're gonna have on the FM side. We'll wrap things up, but we'll do a couple minutes here. Uh, pre record of another segment if you want. 
All right, Rock One 2.1 KFMA. Uh, that is all the time we have for today. I want to remind you that I'll be live at Jim Click Nissan at the Auto- Nissan uh, at the Auto Mall today from three to five. We'll be giving away gift certificates and goodies, and you can check out their great sales that they got going on for their 96 hour Markdown Madness event. So I'll be out there from three to five. Jim Click Nissan. Uh, it's uh, time for your beef tip before we get out of here. And you know, America was recently ranked 23rd with happiness. Right, we're not a very happy country. Uh, but when you're 23 isn't bad. Yeah, well, we're definitely not number one. <laughs> we're not number 24 either. Right? Yeah. Uh, but so here are some tips to be happy and to get happy. All right. So one, get out and socialize. Right. Uh, two, lower your screen time. You know, stay away from the internet altogether. Really. Uh, three, volunteer. Four, listen to your body, uh, especially after you pull your finger because that's hilarious. How can you not be happy after that? Uh, do what you can to minimize stress, find that work-life balance, and most importantly, add more movement to your day, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's easy to be sit around and, and get depressed. But when you're moving, your body's moving, you get a little more active, you release those uh, endorphins that magically make you a little happier. Right, Rico? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> there's your beef tip. Thank you guys for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day. Drive safe, ride safe, and as always, rock local. Later. On side of beef, so we'll come. Clear. All right. We're going to go a little extra here on the podcast broadcast for you. Uh, and then what else was on that list that we didn't get to? So the only thing we didn't get to was uh, Godzilla and, and Kong. Well, let's talk Godzilla Kong. So, uh, wait, wait, not yet. Oh, let me no, get it. Uh, I gotta get it started. You gotta get the music going. Not the music. Boom, I gotta boom, see boom, boom, boom. what part of the uh, the hour tomorrow, which will go nine o'clock hour, and Babuski. You know what else increases happiness? What this? <laughs> this does. <laughs> Choke, have you, have you ever pushed your baby face like this? Choking it's, out a baby? Yes, you, you have no idea. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so easy. I know. I was going to make a, an abortion joke when I got this too, unfortunately. Um, but the, this is what my baby would look like. And then <laughs> and then you smush the baby like that. That's, that's Toast your head? You're getting really creative <laughs> with this extra <laughs> underwear. Very creative. Is At it actually? I don't even the, know what it is. It's like a swing shot. Are no, you sure I think it is? it's like a replacement underwear, right? It is. It's replacement underwear, dude. You, you, you don't know what underwear is. I just, I'm just glad you kept the underwear on the baby because I would have been like, you didn't. No, I did. Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm not because an animal, it, Pete. Yeah, if you would have took the underwear off, I would have been head. like, I would have been like, whoa, Diddy. <laughs> No Diddy, no Diddy, no Diddy. Uh, whoa, Diddy. Oh, oh shit! I wanted to. Uh, there was a Diddy bit that I wanted to do uh, with Weirdo, but maybe I'll do it with. I wrote it down, uh, but uh, we, <laughs> we'll get to that. That's for a speed break. Okay. Uh, oh, let's, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to get Super Diddy. You got five minutes. You get Super Diddy? <laughs> yeah. No, hold on a second. Pop Evil and Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to the show. We got film critic extraordinaire Herb Stratford back in studio with us. Good morning, Herb. Good morning. All right. Uh, welcome back. Let's talk about uh, Godzilla versus Kong because I know people are excited about this. Are you? So here's the thing. It's actually Godzilla X Kong, which means Godzilla <gasps> plus Kong. They're collaborating. No, oh, no if, you, if you want to be a nerd about it, it's a Godzilla m- multiplied by <laughs> yeah, Kong. Times, times Kong. Kong. Times yeah, it Kong. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and this is something I wasn't aware of. Like, apparently, the kids know this, but when you put an X between things, it means like you're collaborating. So, I just uh, I, I didn't know that. But yeah, we had Godzilla versus Kong last movie. Now, this is the next one. They're teaming up. Wonder Twin Powers activate. Okay. And uh, and they're basically, you know, now that we know about the the world inside the core of the Earth, if you saw the last movie. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a world down there. I don't know how the sunlight works, but anyway, <laughs> um, there's a world down there, and there's now a threat that's going to potentially destroy us on the surface, and also, you know, Kong's happy place. I do uh, like uh, I, I do like Kong's that the place. this whole Godzilla Kong universe uh, is sp- like spins off from Middle Earth theory. Yeah. You know, which has been around it for is. a while. Inner Earth, yeah, Hollow Earth theory. Yeah, Hollow yeah. Earth, yeah. So Hollow Earth theory has been around on the internet since the beginning of the internet, which yeah. is fascinating in science fiction as well. But, you know, you're just like, what if there was a whole other world yeah. inside our world? And they're telling us King Kong's down there, like, don't go down there. Yeah, yeah. Like, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, that, so basically the thing about it that's interesting to me is this is the lowest budget MonsterVerse movie. Warning flag number one. Oh, no. Okay. Number two, 
There are zero reviews, zero scores, zero anything. So really? no one has seen this movie. None of my critic peers, <laughs> nothing on Rotten Tomatoes, no reviews, nothing. Well, wow. The last Godzilla versus Kong or whatever, and which is still in the same company, same universe, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That was a big was budget affair. Uh, yeah, and I think they're just like, it's a cash grab, right? And here's the other thing that sort of irritates me. They may, they forced the movie theaters to drop Godzilla minus one so they could have this. Ah, Not cool. Money, money, money. They're, they're jealous because Godzilla minus one won an Oscar. Yes. Right? Yep. And then it came out in black and white and had even more box office. And they're mad. So they're like, no, we get rid of that movie. You're going to show our movie, which we didn't spend enough money on, and it's all going to be CGI. And wow. So if you're a fan... You know, maybe Todd can go see it for us. I don't know. I'm just saying. Come on, Todd. Okay, so let me ask you this then. If it's a lower budget film, do you think then potentially it would be less CGI and more guy in a suit around miniature? <laughs> Which uh, would be better. People? It yeah. would be better. Actually, I would enjoy that more. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, Godzilla, Godzilla minus one was was sort of set the bar now. So this, these American Godzilla movies are sort of in the back burner for me. But I just think it's interesting that they're dropping it in March. Lowest budget, no scores because no one's seen it. That's a couple of flags. Now, it's one mm-hmm. of those things, too, that always begs the question about movies made particularly for that uh, Chinese market. Where it's yeah. just like, just whatever. Let's put it out there and get some money. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, you know, and I think that there's competing factors here, right? So the American guys are paying Toho a licensing fee every time they make a Godzilla movie, right? Yeah. And now yeah. the Toho people are like, we're going to make our own movies because we're, you know, we're, we can do it. Yeah. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. Okay. So, oh, well, let me Skippable. ask you this then. Uh, because uh, Dune, part of their marketing promotion is they created a popcorn bucket that you can <laughs> make love to. Is there a Godzilla. popcorn bucket that we can make love to for this film? I do not think so. Okay. So <laughs> then you have to make your own and it has a hundred arms they're making classic mistakes <laughs> tons of mistakes happening a sexy mothra bucket yeah. come yeah. on now so as far as godzilla and kong then you're going to do your best to actively avoid it i am okay I, I go see asphalt city instead okay yeah. well, if you were going to give a predictive uh like rotten tomatoes score on this what do you think this is going to average once it is reviewed by the public 40 Oh, that's still pretty high, though. Yeah, because there's a lot of fanboys. They'll see it no matter what. Mm. <laughs> oh, are you are you like calling shots at like throwing just blows to the fanboys? Waste out your there? money, nerds. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just you know you can you can call me a nerd for Dune, but I'm just you know I'm not yeah. for American Godzilla. I will I will preach on uh, Japanese Godzilla, but American Godzilla is not doing it for me. You're such a hipster when it comes to Godzilla's, man. <laughs> He's right. Uh, you are too, Thank though. You, You're Rico. always a hipster. I we have good taste. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's lacking these days. Okay, yeah. Tell me uh, how much you love Fast and Furious again. <laughs> now, I admittedly do that <laughs> as a sociological study of the American psyche. Okay. Okay, yes, and yes. I try to get involved with that and observe it from a very innocent standpoint. I don't okay. actually enjoy them in the same way I would enjoy, say, Jurassic Park. Okay. Or The Godfather. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's, there's levels of passion. There's levels. Yeah. Levels Chief of Rico's nuance. passion. Nuance. All right. Exactly. Well, there's some movie reviews Family. of Herb Stratford. <laughs> uh, we're going to hit the reset. We've got more Beefy Presents podcast broadcasts coming up after these words. Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Yeah, that was good. You got to get out of here? I got to go. All right, you do that. Well, I guess we'll wrap up on the stream here, but I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out afterwards, and uh, Mario and I will still record some stuff. Um, but uh, we will see you guys later. All the good stuff. Wave that baby at him. Oh, my fly little baby. It looks like a thumb. A little thumb, baby. Thumb, baby. Thanks, Mari. You're welcome. My booski. <laughs>